Today I will provide you with a plan to overcome your fear of fighting. Fear is often misunderstood. We mistake fear for weakness. There's this idea of a hero who boldly faces an overwhelming enemy while feeling no fear at all. There's even a brand of clothing called No Fear, whatever the hell that means. But what exactly is fear? Well, there are two types of fear. Irrational fear, such as a fear of spiders, and hey, look, I get it, nobody wants a creepy eight-legged ninja crawling on you, but come on. You're like Godzilla to them. The other type of fear is a rational fear. Maybe that's spiders of brown recluse, and I guess that would be a rational fear at that point. Another rational fear is a fear of getting beat up. If you get beat up, you will have physical injuries, possibly medical bills, and of course, you'll suffer humiliation. Those are rational fears because if they were to happen, they're actually bad things. If we're going to learn to master fear, we first have to understand it. And the first thing in understanding fear is to realize that everyone feels it. It's pretty common for world champion athletes to vomit before games due to fear. Hall of Fame quarterback Jim Kelly said he used to throw up before every single game due to anxiety. Mike Tyson famously said he was so scared before every fight that he used to cry in the locker room. Mike freaking Tyson. But all of these athletes had something that they would do to get their mind into the correct frame so that they could perform when the time came, and so can you. So let's take a look at why fear exists. While most people think fear is something that only weak people experience and that you should be ashamed by it, fear actually has an important role to play. Fear is there to make you pay attention to something that might be dangerous. It's quite literally your brain saying, hey, this seems important. Are you paying attention? Are you ready? Fear is what makes you lock your car and house doors. Fear tells you to look both ways before you walk into the street. Fear saves your life multiple times every single day and you don't even realize it. People that don't feel fear do dumb things and often don't live long. People that don't acknowledge their fear often wind up as victims of crime. Vigilance is a proactive form of fear that allows you to spot danger approaching before it's too late. So do you see how fear is actually important and it's good that you have it? Now that we understand that fear is actually good, let's learn how to manage it wisely. First off, never tell yourself that you shouldn't be afraid. Good intentioned parents, mentors, and friends will say, don't be afraid. But that's the worst advice that you could tell someone or, 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 or to be told. Why? Because you don't have control over what you feel. You only have control over your actions. It's better to say, hey, it's normal and okay to feel fear. When you acknowledge an emotion, it loosens its stranglehold on you, freeing you to do what needs to be done, which might be smashing someone in the face in our particular case. If you're confronted with real violence, your fear system will be kicking in. Fight or flight will be engaged, and if you don't address those feelings, they might turn into a freeze response. And that's a recipe for all the bad things that you don't want to have happen to actually happen. So in the moment of feeling fear, here are two things that you can do to take back control ASAP because you may not have much time. First, tell yourself that it is okay to feel fear, that fear is normal, but you still have a job to do. Second, take some slow, deep breaths to calm your nervous system and lower that adrenaline response. Okay, story time. A while back, these two guys who were looking for trouble decided they were gonna try to jump me. As these guys were approaching, pumping their fists, trying to psych themselves up, and trying to psych me out, um, I did indeed feel a classic adrenaline rush and fear response. My head rushed with thoughts of, oh no, what if all this martial arts training that I've been doing is just BS and it won't really work? That's fear for you. 
Notice I said that I felt fear, I did not say that I was afraid. Fear is not who I am, and it's not who you are. It's a temporary emotion that you experience. So here's how I handled it. As they approached, I had several seconds to work through the following. In my head, I said, thank you, fear. I'm paying attention. I've trained for this and I'm prepared. Then I slowed my breathing and instantly my adrenaline rush dropped and my fear turned into focus. I was able to control how I was going to act before the fight so that I could either deescalate it or intimidate. I opted for the latter. I was able to plan how I would create my entry or my first strike as they approached and then how I would utilize our multiple attacker tactics so I only had to fight one person at a time. Interestingly enough, the effects of adrenaline like tunnel vision, hearing loss, time distortion, trembling, etc., they weren't really noticeable. Quite frankly, I simply felt energized, focused, and ready. And guess what happened? Their fear responses must have kicked in because when they saw my calm, grounded stance with my eyes fixed right into their very souls, they stopped in their tracks. One, one guy actually tried to hide behind something and the other guy kind of got uh, frozen like a deer in headlights. Once I realized that they were scared and they weren't going to attack, I told them they better leave and they obliged. So thankfully no one had to get physically hurt and this is exactly the type of outcome that proper martial arts training can provide to you. Now would all of that have worked if I didn't believe in my fighting skills? Well. While acknowledging fear and taking control of your breathing will absolutely give you back some control, you still need to be able to fight in a situation like that in case they don't back off. Remember what I told my subconscious brain? I've trained for this. I am prepared for this. Look, I've had tens if not hundreds of thousands of punches thrown at my face over the decades I've been training. And I've become pretty darn good at not getting hit and at landing my own strikes. I've trained multiple attacker drills to the point where I react without having to think about it. And I feel pretty confident in my abilities. Would you like to feel that way too? Watching videos like this one are part of your education, but nothing substitutes going to a high quality martial arts gym that teaches realistic fighting and earning your confidence by training consistently over time, getting your reps and challenging yourself to improve. So my challenge to you is to start looking for a good martial arts gym near you and start going consistently. Go become a warrior, not a worrier. If you like this video, thanks for sharing it and thanks for leaving me a thumbs up. I've got part two coming out soon, so make sure you're subscribed so you get it. See you next time.